guys, I'm Leo Rank with the Guitar Maniac. In my last video I promised to talk about vintage vibrato Stratocaster system with six screws. And I don't want to talk about the product itself, I would like to talk about the experience that I made with it. And I would like to call it the backwards experience. When I was a young kid who was just learning to play a guitar I had a kind of nerdy approach. I figured out that abusing vibrato and calling it cool was a kind of poser thing. The cool thing was to being actually able to play a guitar. And so, as a kid, I simply ignored the vibrato system at all. Until I heard Viktor Smolsky. In the year 2004 I heard a Unity CD by a German heavy metal band Rage. The way Viktor Smolsky used the vibrato system there just blew my mind. Of course he wasn't the first guitar player who used this kind of technique. The guys like John Petrucci, Joe Satriani or Steve Vai used the same kind of technique in the late uh, 80s or early 90s. After I heard their music I stopped ignoring the vibrato system. And the first thing I noticed, you can overdo the things easily while using the whammy bar. And you should kind of find balance between it's cool or it's too much. One of the best examples of using the vibrato is Jeff Beck. Yes, the guy who started his career back in the 60s. And this was the first part of my backwards experience. First I heard Viktor Smolsky, then I heard uh, Steve Vai, John Petrucci and Joe Satriani, and after all those guys I heard the Jeff Beck. By the time I decided to use the vibrato system I've already got this Ivan SRG 550 from 1991. It has its own version of Floyd Rose, and to be perfectly honest, this wasn't my personal choice to get guitar with the Floyd Rose system, because I didn't know anything about different types of vibratos. I just needed the better guitar that I had before and this one was cheap to get because uh, it was all scratched and poorly refinished and so I purchased it on the eBay. Only when I tried to change the strings for the first time I asked myself what the hell is this? Then I figured out that Floyd Rose was invented to achieve the ultimate tuning stability. You have locking nut that eliminates any kind of friction. After you use the wavy bar the string tension is the same that it was before. You have the fine tuners here the same as the violin has. In fact, this one is a nice piece of engineering. And so I asked myself, if Floyd Rose is so good, why do some of the guitar players still prefer other types of vibrato systems? Some of the musicians claim that Floyd Rose is a huge piece of metal that kills the sound of wood, unlike in other types of vibrato. Well, I couldn't make a blind test to prove if this information is true or not, because I can't just throw the Floyd Rose away and replace it with a different system. This just wouldn't fit. And I can't just grab another guitar and say, hey, it sounds different. Well, of course it's a different guitar, it's supposed to sound different. But then again, I like the sound of my Ibanez and I don't really care about this information. There were two things that I was interested in. First of all, tuning stability. And second, can I do the same kind of crazy voicing as I can do with the Floyd Rose? And soon enough I was able to test a different type of vibrato system, Wilkinson VS100. Like a Floyd Rose, Wilkinson is placed on two height adjustment screws and it can go in both up and down directions. But it has no fine tuning and no locking nut. At this point you can't eliminate the friction at all, but you can reduce it to the minimum. The first thing was suggested by Leo Fender in 1954. The strings should go straight before and after nut, no angles. And the second, you should reduce the friction between string and the nut itself. You can do it in many ways. Graphite lubricant, graphite or task nut, the one from GraphTech works perfectly well, or like this one, the roller nut. Using the locking tuners might be the smart idea as well. In this case you don't have to do a lot of string wounds around the tuners axis. If you go down with the whammy bar it might change the tension in these wounds, causing your guitar going out of tune. With the locking tuners you have less wounds and less tuning stability issues. This system has great tuning stability and you can do all kind of crazy stuff with it.
course, I couldn't reveal all types of vibrato in one single video. But all the non-locking 2.0 vibrato systems work kind of the same way. If you ask me why would I prefer Wilkinson VS100 over Floyd Rose, first of all, changing the strings is much easier. You make it in less steps and you don't need Allen wrench for this. And second, tuning the guitar is much easier. Sometimes when your guitar with Floyd Rose is out of tune and you go with fine tuners all the way up or down and it still isn't enough, you have to go and grab Allen wrench. On the guitar with Wilkinson VS100 you don't have to do this. In fact, I had a good experience with both Floyd Rose and Wilkinson Vibratos. But ever since there are a lot of vintage style Stratocaster Vibratos on the market, the one with six screws, I decided to test those as well. And this is the second part of my backwards experience. First, I started with Floyd Rose, then I tried modern two-point non-locking vibrato, and now I'm trying out the one that was introduced back in 1954. And I want to answer the same two questions. First, tuning stability, and second, can you do the same crazy things that you can do with Floyd Rose? First of all, Vintage Stratocaster Vibrato is a non-locking system, so I put locking tuners and a task nut from the graph tag. And because it's non-locking system, it would be fair to compare it to the Wilkinson Vibrato. I don't like the way the Vintage system is attached to the guitar. It's just mounted with six wood screws on the guitar body. The height adjustment screws of both Wilkinson and Floyd Rose system are put in the metal cylinder and this is much better solution from the engineering's point. On both Wilkinson and Floyd Rose systems you can go in both up and down directions. With the default factory settings of the vintage straight vibrato you can only go down and this was something that I wanted to change and that's where the problem began. The height adjustment screws of both Wilkinson and Floyd Rose system have this groove that holds base plate in place. The screws of vintage straight vibrato don't have it and that's why you can't control the base plate. It can go up and down and you can predict what it does the next. Fortunately, I found the screws that were made by German's brand Gölder that actually have this groove. They are not expensive and I could actually get the height adjustment of the base plate under control. After that, I tried to set the vibrato the same way I do it with Wilkinson or Floyd Rose systems. The important thing is finding the zero point. That's when your guitar is in tune and the tension of the strings equals the tension of the springs. The recommended setting of the zero point is when the bass plate is parallel to the strings. Well, I'm actually more than satisfied with the results. After all those adjustments, vibrato system works kind of good on the way down. I can do all those crazy voices that I do with Floyd Rose. But I can't go up as much as I can do with Wilkinson or Floyd Rose. The problem is that the bass plate is too close to the body of the guitar. First, I wanted to lower the settles and to raise the plate, but in this case, the strings started to touch the screws. Hey guys from the Gölder factory, if you are watching this video, so here is a message for you. First of all, I really like your products and those screws for the vintage style straight vibratos are just amazing. However, I have a suggestion for you. If you could place this groove a little bit closer to the head of the screw, this could improve a couple of things. You could actually raise the plate itself and lower the saddles, and in this case you can go not only all the way down and slightly up, you can go up and down in both directions. So maybe you should consider to do this. I just want to test one last thing. Most of the manufacturers recommend to set the base plate parallel to the strings. What if I break this rule and set the base plate slightly angled?
Well, I'm more than happy with the results of the experiment. Vintage vibrato system isn't my favorite so far, and in fact, if I have to design my very own guitar, I would probably take something else. But if I already get a guitar that has this kind of vibrato, I don't have to be afraid of it. Because you see, you can get pretty good results with it. And keep in mind, this is actually a Chinese knockoff and it's not very good, but still it works. And I hope this information was useful for you. So, have a nice day and keep on rocking.